through the season. That was the best thing to happen to Stoudemire, in my opinion, Kevin. He got to play playoff basketball again, and we know that wasn't going to happen in New York. The drive by Jordan, and out of bounds as the Heat gain possession. Heat ball. Well, now let's check out the rookies shooting the highest percentage over the last 10 games. A very confident group of young men right now. Freak number one. Miami leading by 13. Stoudemire, the screen. Wade kicks to Green. Back to Wade. And he uses both hands to jam it in. And, and nobody, guys, among the defenders stepping up to challenge him on that drive to the 10. And, Greg, he says, thank you very much, and sails in for the flush. And those are the kinds of sequences that tell you why the score is what it is. Wow, wow, he got whacked on that one. Shouldn't be much debate there. Blatant contact. Straightforward call. Simple. And the second free throw, good. Check out the game for Jordan. Nine points and four assists. He's been tough on the inside and displayed great vision with his passing, too. And you know what? He is the total package today, giving them a little bit of everything. Anderson a screen on Zeller. Stoudemire with the ball. And Zeller picks him up defensively. And the basket good. And he's starting to show that killer instinct this quarter, looking to extend the lead. Wade against Jordan. That doesn't go either for Jordan. And if the shot's not there, you've got to understand that move the basketball. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not quite sure what his mindset or what he was thinking there. I mean, that was just a terrible shot. Shot clock at six. Wade passes to Stoudemire. And off the front iron, and in it goes. Stoudemire's got seven. Jordan against Wade. Outside Jordan. And fouled as he went up to the dunk. Good aggressive move, and he'll shoot two. That's on Chris Anderson. The Hornets have not shot all that well from the free throw line. Six of 11. Two shots. And so he hits both. And through one half, it hasn't even been close. Hi, Kevin, I'm here. And welcome back as we... Sonata Myers checked in for Miami. Gerald Green comes in for Dwayne Wade. On the floor for Charlotte, MKG and Zeller at the forward duo. Jeremy Lin is out there with Jordan. And it's Kaminsky in at the center position. Here's Stoudemire. And foul called as he misses. He'll go to the line and shoot two. Kevin, here we can get a look at Charlotte and what kind of numbers they put up these last 10 games. Seventh in field goal percentage. 11th in free throw percentage. And they're in the top half of the league in scoring as well. Not too shabby. And going back to their field goal percentage, great consistency and execution for them offensively. I think that's made the difference. They don't have many dry spells. Winslow's checked in for Luol Dang, and he gets it to go. He always knows where his teammate's going to be, and Kevin, that will let him put the ball where he wants it, right waiting for him. Well, I think it's been said about a thousand times now how Coach Spolstra started as a video coordinator with the Heat, but he's been with the organization for so long, they are starting to become synonymous. Jordan Move kicks to Lynn. Sellers setting the pick for Lynn, and there's the call. It's going to be an illegal screen. Here's a look at some stats for Kaminsky. How his last 10 games have gone, averaging about seven points, three rebounds and two assists. And for a reserve big man, not a big drop off when he checks in the game. Yeah, you know, you want your team to at least hold court when the reserves come in. Don't lose ground. He definitely keeps them solid up front. Here's Winslow. Again, the miss by the Heat. Move it, move it. Greg, as you said, Spolster has been with the Heat for so long now in his eighth season. He was handpicked by Pat Riley to lead the team, and Riley 
Clark kind of molded him in his image. Yeah, and it was clear that Pat Riley believes in him and continues to believe in him. Coach Spolstra has had very high expectations on his shoulders ever since taking over the team, and he's actually lived up to him. You know, and, and for Cody Zeller, after that promising rookie campaign, he just did not tear it up in year two. In fact, his production only improved slightly. But, but that was mostly due to the increase in playing time. Talented guy, no doubt, just still trying to find his way in the league. And for Cody Zeller, Greg, there's a reason he was the fourth overall pick back in 2013. He showed the size and athleticism to be a difference maker in college. And Clark, now he has to do it at the pro level as well, and I think people are pretty confident he can. Yeah, I'm agreeing with those folks myself because he does have the tools. It's now a matter of transitioning and becoming a little better shooting the ball than he's shown. Dragic with it. He's got 18. And Jordan sends it back. A fast break now for Charlotte. Lynn with the ball. Outside Jordan. The dish now to Kaminsky. And he gets it to go. Kaminsky's got four points in the quarter. Four of their last five makes came off of a high quality shot inside. Textbook. Really, when you look at how they're playing, they are having their way down low. Bosch dishes to Green. Tries to snap the cold streak. Basket is good. The assist from Bosch. Bosch has got his fourth assist in this one. Dragic created the space for that shot with a solid screen. Left side, Lynn. Jordan the screen. From the arc. The offensive rebound. A nice shot by Zeller. Zeller's got 11 points. Just a positive force right now for these guys. And though his team time out, time out. has fallen a bit short, it's not because of him. And I think Doris Burke has something for us right now. Doris? Hey, guys, I got a chance to hear what Steve Clifford was saying to his team. The focus of the discussion was getting their offense to run through Zeller. Coach has a lot of faith in him offensively and let his players know it, insisting that he be at the forefront of what they do at that end of the court from here on out. Clearly, some adjustments there had to be made because the time left for a comeback is quickly running out. Kevin, over to you. And thank you for that, Doris. And a chance for just a second to check out the scoring breakdown for the Heat. They've knocked down plenty of mid-range jumpers in this one. That's been big. We're in the final quarter of play here. Three minutes in. Wade and Dang are the two and three. The big men are Bosch and Whiteside. And it's Dragic in at the point guard. That's the group on the four for Miami. You know, something that's floating around in the sports world and in the NBA is reseeding after the playoffs start. And for those of you who may not understand the situation, it's simply saying that no matter what, he would play the lower seeded team, however you get to those numbers. Here's Williams. That drops and it comes off an assist from Jordan. Jordan's got his seventh assist of the game with that last one. The Heat leading by 23. Well, if you're just tuning in, welcome. We've got about three and a half minutes gone here in the fourth quarter. Outside Bosch. Four on the shot clock. Right side of screen. Wade for three. The Hornets pull it in. The Hornets on offense. It's a 12-2 run here. Good pace. The drive by Jordan. Miami grabs the miss. Whiteside's got 15 rebounds here tonight. Wade outside. Chalmers against Batum. Now the feed to Wade. Back to Chalmers. And there's the whistle, sound hard on the shot. He'll go to the line. That's on Marvin Williams. And one thing about Mario Chalmers last season, he really had to play Substitution on the court.
Here are the Hornets with the ball. You got it. They're on a 12 to 3 run. You know, going back to Mario Chalmers last year, guys, I mean, having to take on more of a scoring role was tough for him. His field goal percentage dropped 50 points from the season before. His three point percentage dropped even more. His assist numbers were down. Well, I bet you part of that was the fact LeBron was no longer there. Miss shots, just it's not there right now with this team leading. Perhaps, you know, let's focus on some other areas of the game. And Kid Gilchrist kicks to Jordan. The pass to Jefferson. It's Kid Gilchrist on the way. Charlotte moving it around. And it's blocked by Whiteside. In transition, here comes Miami. And the basket good. And it's nine points here for Justice Winslow. That's how to orchestrate for your teammate. Terrific pass. And on the topic of Chalmers, you know, he's a complimentary player. He, he can D up. He can hit the open three. He's been known to hit big shots, a solid finisher, and that is valuable. But when you ask him maybe to do a little too much, then you're not playing to his strength. Back to green. Yeah, the, the, the NBA Development League now celebrating its 15th anniversary and, and a lot of change over that time. None of the original eight teams still playing in their original locations. Still, it's only it. growing. And I think we'll see it grow to 30 teams before long. Stolen by Wade. Green, the best to Wade. Back to Green. To the inside. And you can count it. He'll go to the line with a chance to make it three. Well, you're talking about the D-League. Not really a moneymaker yet, but it's really benefited, Clark, the NBA in so many ways. Clearly has, Kevin, a place to train new players, officials, and executives or management, a way to test out possible rule changes. I think building revenue is the focus, though, and the players make a small salary, but the NBA Developmental League is helping the NBA be better. And three from Jordan, offensive rebound. Not only is their lead big, but their advantage on the boards is huge, too. They've been the aggressors, plain and simple, outworking them, fighting for every loose ball. Jordan against Chalmers. Williams with the block. They get it back. Near the three-point line, it's Wade. Can't hit. Now Charlotte takes it the other way. He's going to play his way right onto the bench and out of the game if he continues to shoot it like he has so far in this quarter. Jordan against Chalmers. Pass to Jordan. He feeds it to Hawes. At the top of the key, Williams. Here's Lamb. That drops, and it comes off an assist from Williams. And so it's going to end up in the record books as a blowout, a dominating performance for the Heat. And they could do no wrong today, Steve. That's right. This was a team performing to its uh, Clark fullest capabilities. Yeah, and a very satisfying win for them, too. A game to remember, and on the other side, definitely one you want to forget as soon as possible. And so checking out their season record, this game will become their 45th win. And in this era of unparalleled parity, it takes a lot to sweep an opponent in four straight games. But that's exactly how they finished off their season series tonight against the Hornets. And a great team effort, but still, what an individual performance for Dwayne Wade. You have to focus on the steals he came up with. They were huge factors in the end result. Ryan Roberts has checked in for Charlotte. It's stolen by Wade. There's a four-second difference from the shot clock to the game clock. Lays it in off the breakaway. And they feel good about this win tonight, guys, defending their home court. I agree. Job well done. They gave these fans exactly what they wanted. Jordan up top, defended by Chalmers. Williams, he got an advantage there off the pick and took it right in. The second he got around the pick and shook his man, it was straight to the bucket for the easy deuce. Very, very well done. Now here's Wade. And stolen by Jordan. Off target. And so Miami takes this one by a big margin. They won this game going over. Yes, Scott. The 2K Sports postgame show.